Hi, in this video I'm going to paint a stainless steel martini shaker with a lime on a bit of cloth. And uh, this is the reference if you would like to try this yourself. So I'm starting off on a square panel. This is 8x8 eight eight, and I'm using a little bit of uh, mineral spirits uh, to dilute my paint at the very beginning uh, just to make it easier to draw. I don't always use mineral spirits, um, but it tends to make things a little bit easier at the very beginning uh, because the paint will kind of, the mineral spirits will evaporate, leaving paint that's uh, pretty lean as the base of your drawing. So I'm uh, doing a very kind of rough, um, rough drawing here, um, just kind of trying to find the major parts of this martini shaker. and. Uh, it's not going to be exactly like the reference uh, because I'm painting from life. Um, if you have a chance, um, try to paint from life. Uh, but photos are good too. But uh, I find painting from photos a little bit more difficult than painting from life. Although I will say that painting something like stainless steel, uh, like shiny metal, it's uh, you you run into a, a few pitfalls painting from life because uh, the view that you get from each one of your eyes is going to be slightly different uh, in the way that the light is uh, all the different reflections happen on it so in a way um, the photo might be a little bit easier in this case so what I do when I paint from life sometimes I'll just uh, if I see that the view is very drastically different um, with each one of my eyes I'll just look at it with one eye and uh, that kind of flatten things, flattens things out and kind of simplifies my view a little, a little bit so I can uh, uh, copy all the reflections that, uh, you know, that are represented in, uh, through one eye. So that's kind of one of the, I guess, little tricks to painting um, either steel, steel or things like glass also uh, because, you know, depending on how close you are, you might get kind of drastically different views through each one of your eyes. Um, the, other, um, um, the other trick to painting uh, reflective surfaces like this is, uh, is having a good drawing to begin with. That helps a lot. Um, and then the, um, the other trick, if you, know, if, there, if you can call them tricks, is um, having enough contrast. Like uh, shiny metal has very drastic contrast between the the darks that are reflected versus the lights that are reflected. Especially in this case, I'm painting it on a white kind of light background. Uh, it's a white surface, a white cloth. So the contrast between those whites and what's reflected in the um, uh, in the rest of the room, which is very dark, uh, are going to be quite different and quite uh, quite contrasting. So getting those uh, kind of strong contrasts are pretty important. Um, so I'm still using kind of a wash here. Um, I, I blocked in a little bit of that uh, dark area that gets reflected um, in the upper part of the martini shaker. And now I'm just uh, trying to kind of refine the, the outline of it and just making sure that, you know, things are kind of symmetrical and make sense in general. I think one of the things kind of looking back that I probably should have changed a little bit is um, the composition is slightly tight. Uh, I think I could have probably pulled back a little bit, uh, made things a little bit smaller because that um, the corner of the cloth is touching the the bottom edge of the painting. Um, which is something you probably don't want to do. Like you don't want to have points coming to an end on an edge of an, on an edge of your picture because that creates tension and that creates a, um, kind of a stopping point for your eyes. But because uh, the cloth is white and the surface is white, there's not going to be a lot of contrast there, so it's not going to draw too much attention. So I think I'm okay. I think the the main contrasting areas are going to be the focal point is going to be the and the metal, uh, the dark areas of the metal, and also the lime, which is away from the from the edges of the painting. And uh, 
Uh, what I'm doing now is just uh, taking a little bit of, uh, taking a paper towel and just wiping away, um, creating some lines, creating some outlines around the edges of that martini shaker. So the other thing that's different about this painting from my other paintings is uh, I'm actually using a little bit of medium. Uh, usually I paint with linseed oil. Um, this time I decided to splurge a little bit and uh, I'm using a, um, a medium which consists of equal parts uh, turpentine, linseed oil, and the mar varnish. Um, and the benefit of that medium is that it'll make the paint flow really nicely just like oil paint, um, but it'll make it also much more sticky, um, much more, ad uh, it'll give it like much better ad adhesive qualities uh, to the um, to the can to the panel and also to the um, layers of, to other layers of paint um, and uh, once it uh, kind of evaporates once that um, the turpentine evaporates from it it becomes uh, pretty tacky so it's easy to put additional layers of paint on top of that so um, it's nice if you have enough ventilation and if you have uh, um, you know, if you're not painting in your in your house, um, I usually don't use it, and um, this time I decided to try to use it just to kind of remind myself what it's like to paint with a this kind of medium. But it's not necessary. Uh, you can use linseed oil, <clears throat> or you can just uh, just use uh, pure uh, oil paint uh, without diluting it with anything. Uh, that's also possible and, and I have a video I think a couple of videos where I do that as well um, it's all a matter of um, you know how much um, a how much your preference and B you know how much you're willing to sacrifice your own health and those around you uh, for your art it is nice to bring it on uh, landscapes though but um, I tend not to use it very much when I'm uh, painting indoors so anyway, I, um, as usual, I start with my darkest darks. I am um, not really thinking the, the, uh, too much about individual reflections or anything like that. Uh, looking at kind of basic shapes, big forms, and um, just kind of uh, very roughly blocking them in. Uh, it's not, not time to uh, think about details yet. Um, just kind of establishing um, a overall shapes and b trying to get kind of a general uh, general color um, that uh, you know that it serves as a good base for um, the details that are going to go over it. Now uh, this lime has uh, is kind of a funny color. It's got a little bit of a light spot at the bottom, so it's it sort of doesn't make sense uh, the way I'm the way I'm painting it, but. Um, that's how it was in real life, so I'm sticking true to that. So it almost looks like it's lit from the bottom, but it actually has a kind of a yellowish, uh, light green uh, area, I guess, where it wasn't facing the sun. So I'm working from darks to lights. Uh, so next is my background color, which is a kind of like a medium light blue. And uh, that's going to be... Uh, it's going to be important to kind of keep some of that color left on the palette because a lot of those colors are going to get reflected in the stainless steel. So um, that's going to be important to make sure that I um, bring those into the uh, the areas where um, where the angle sort of reflects the light directly, uh, refle reflects the color from the background kind of directly towards the eyes. And it's going to create some nice effects where it's almost like melting through to the background color. Um, as far as background colors, um, you know, I'm not a stickler for making it exactly the color that um, that's there. Um, I try to make it an interesting color, uh, you know, color that's not just um, not just like blue and white, you know, that or you know, like not a, not a color that's too simple. Uh, so mixing in a little bit of yellow to it. Um, um, makes it a little bit, you know, slightly warmer uh, and a little bit more interesting than just kind of, you know, what would be a, almost an equivalent of tube paint. Um, 
and it's uh, that's sort of close to the color that I have back there and um, this initial layer uh, it's gonna be um, it's gonna serve as my kind of reference point and if later on I need to I feel like I need to darken it or lighten it um, I can do that pretty easily because I'm not painting it very thick so I think this is pretty close to what I like what I want to do okay for a little while I'm gonna be just uh, kind of painting things in so I'm gonna Put on a little bit of music and um, we'll uh, pick this back up once things get a little bit more interesting.
So one thing that's um, always interesting to me is when there are two very similar colors in a composition. So in this case, we have the white table, and then we also have that white cloth. Um, and the trick is to paint them and make them look separate and make them look different. Um, and so you're kind of forced to really look really close and kind of examine those subtle variations in color. In this case, um, the white table has a slightly reflective quality. It has a, you know, it's uh, it's varnished with a kind of a reflective, a shiny uh, varnish, clear coat. Um, and uh, so it does reflect a little bit more uh, of its environment than the cloth. The cloth is uh, obviously very matte. So what's happening is the blue background is going to get reflected in the table, but not so much in the cloth. And so that's going to make the table a little bit of a cooler white uh, compared to the cloth, which is going to be uh, naturally a little bit more warm. So that's going to be fun to um, to kind of figure out those colors, those subtle variations in color. And then um, the the other white that is present here is the white that's getting reflected into the chrome of the martini shaker. And uh, that's a whole other story because that one is going to be from the point of view of the martini shaker um, now what's being reflected into the the cloth is going to be the uh, the lights that are shining on it and so that's going to be even warmer so the reflection in the chrome is going to be of the cloth and the table is going to be a lot warmer than the table that we're seeing kind of as the viewer so a lot of cool things to kind of notice and to figure out.
as I'm starting to add colors to the to the metal like this uh, table color for example I'm also noticing where else uh, those colors appear so there's obviously that big kind of u-shaped space at the very bottom but also it uh, it appears in the in several other places around the, uh, that surface so there's a there's a few places along the edges that it appears and also in the uh, that kind of that middle part of the lip uh, there's a couple of spots so I'm trying to kind of see and and then sort of uh, find all the different places where um, uh, where those same colors appear um, and uh, at this point is just sort of uh, kind of trusting uh, your eyes and uh, just kind of you know sort of copying but also being aware of the shape of the of the object um, but it's really it's more more about kind of co uh, uh, painting what you see and um, less painting what you know at this point so this uh, towel that uh, that my still life is sitting on has a, a couple of blue stripes and uh, those stripes are like they they seem like a very intense blue but whenever you you know whenever you put down a, any kind of blue it's it always feels kind of wrong and always dark so um, th this blue has uh, a fair amount of um, of red in it also so <clears throat> I'm adding um, a good amount of uh, um, well, not a good amount but a small amount of alizarin crimson and white um, uh, to kind of dull it down and lighten it up a little bit and then this blue also um, it has a really nice reflection in the martini shaker so that's going to be another kind of a point of interest uh, when I get to that uh, that I want to try to capture and uh, add to the painting and then that color is going to be slightly different in the uh, in the reflection uh, than directly on the on the cloth but because I already have a kind of a warmer color as the base on the martini shaker that's going to get mixed in with the blue and that's going to kind of uh, uh, moderate it a little bit and these, uh, these, these stripes have a bit of a perspective going back into space um, I guess because the angle of the the angle within the glass within the the, the metal is um, is slightly different than what we're seeing with our eyes so they kind of come to a little bit of a convergence more so than on the on the cloth that's seen directly and it's actually kind of amazing how all these little details really begin to make that look like a metal metal surface it's really just a collection of different things collection of all the different uh, things that are getting reflected in the in the metal that make that metal uh, look the way it does so the more the more kind of um, accurate details you can add to it the more it'll look like metal it's kind of as simple as that
So now I'm going to get into some darker darks in those reflections. And uh, I think sometimes when you start doing this kind of thing, it might not look right. Um, it may, and you may start to panic. But I think that you just got to trust the process and trust that if you kind of follow what you see, things will turn out okay in the end. Like right now, that doesn't look right. Um, but I'm going to keep adding things that I see, different colors that I see there, and um, make them follow the, the forms that I see there. And in the end, um, the thing that's going to really make it look kind of shiny and reflective are going to be some um, really kind of bright highlights um, placed in the right spot. And uh, as long as you get those in the right, in the right places, um, it actually doesn't matter that much uh, what kind of mess you have in the actual reflections. I mean, you can go kind of crazy and really look close to the reflections and copy them exactly and uh, even see yourself and your easel in there. Um, but that's not, you know, it's not necessary. I think you'll get a um, more or less the, um, the impression of metal um, if you block in the overall basic shapes of darks and lights um, and then with those highlights everything will kind of sing in the end.
And the thing that's happening in this uh, in this martini shaker is that on the edges is where almost the most amount of detail begin to happen, um, because as the as the shape turns away from us, it begins to reflect other parts of the room, and as it turns, uh, you know, almost perpendicular or almost parallel to our eyes, um, at that point we get even some reflections of the that blue background bouncing back at us. And it's not the same blue as the as the the blue background, but um, it's probably going to be a little bit darker. Um, but it's also important to to capture those things, and that's happening on the on that upper ledges, so the very top of the um, of the cap of the martini shaker, and around that rim, uh, but also on the very edges, uh, the the vertical edges of the shaker itself as well. So. That's gonna um, really make it uh, make it feel kind of right, um, having those uh, those edges, those ever ever important edges, um, feel like they're reflecting things from around the room, uh, and not not just things that are right in front of us.
So now that I have uh, most of my reflections in, uh, in the martini shaker, now I'm going to go ahead and start adding the highlights. And um, it's really kind of like this. This is the most fun part of painting is adding highlights. And uh, it's kind of amazing how the whole thing just kind of comes to life with just a few dots of very light blue. Um, I'm using a little bit of blue in the in the titanium white that I have, but it's almost pure titanium white uh, because there's very little color that's being reflected. It's almost all um, it's almost all of the light that hits those 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 spots gets reflected back at us. So we can use almost pure white. And um, there are, I have two light sources in the room. I have one kind of big light that's behind me and uh, that's helping to light the, the panel. And then I have my main light that's close to the still life that's uh, lighting the still life. Um, both of those lights are getting reflected in the, uh, in the metal. However, I'm choosing to only paint the, uh, the, my main light um, just because that's going to uh, provide for a sort of a better illusion. Um, and I think the second reflection is just going to confuse things a little bit. So I think we're getting pretty close here. Um, I feel like the lime probably still needs a little bit more work on it. Um, we need to give it some uh, some reflections. 
Um, kind of fix up the cloth a little bit. I do feel like those shadows behind uh, on, on the right side of the cloth are still a little bit dark and a little bit sharp so I want to soften those a little bit um, but I think we're in good shape and um, I think that that uh, martini shaker is looking pretty metal to me so I don't know what do you think um, would you have done anything different um, let me know in the comments Now, obviously, I didn't paint it exactly the same as um, in real life or in this reference. Uh, for one thing, I made the martini shaker a little bit um, more stout, I guess, is the politically correct word. Um, and uh, that's partially because I wanted to fit it more nicely into the painting and I wanted it to occupy a bigger space. Um, the other thing I I'm noticing that just by looking at the reference photo is that perhaps I could have had a little bit more pinks or kind of uh, purples in the in the reflections um, there you know I, I kind of leaned more towards the blues because there was much more blue in the environment uh, but I think a little bit of uh, pinks and purples might have been nice uh, but I think overall I'm pretty happy with it I like that it feels kind of warm uh, compared to the rest of the environment um, and it uh, it feels shiny and who doesn't like shiny things right
All right, so I think I'm just about done with this one. Uh, let's just soften those shadows a little bit in the back there. And um, I'm going to also um, add a little bit of... Um, there's these little uh, lines, these kind of little etchings in the uh, martini shaker. And uh, I don't want to use a thin brush for that. Um, kind of uh, gotten away without using any thin brushes throughout this whole process. So I'm just going to scrape them out a little bit with the back of the brush. And uh, because my panel was white to begin with, uh, those should come up nice and white. So uh, it should work out. Um, so I'm just going to use the back of the brush and just kind of scrape them in. I'm using um, a piece of pipe as a way to stabilize my hand just because those do need to be kind of precise. All right, and uh, I think with that, I'm going to call this one done. Um, let me know what you think of this uh, video in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about this painting. Um, if you really like this painting, it's actually available on my uh, Etsy shop. So stop by, take a look. Um, might even get the, get to you before, the, uh, before Christmas if you order it soon. So yeah, take a look. Um, I mean, actually, obviously, it depends on when you're watching this video, but... If you're watching this video after I post it um, soon after, then you should be able to get it from my from my shop. All right, uh, leave your comments. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe button, all those good things. Uh, tell your friends about my videos, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.